has been a while. So what are my memorization techniques? Welcome back to my channel. I'm Tina and it has been a while. I apologize for being gone for around a month now, but it's really just because work has been killing me. <coughs> yeah, you will find that in legal practice, sometimes even if you want to do it all. Do well at your job, exercise, drink enough water, eat your vegetables, spend time with your family, indulge in your hobbies, maintain a social life. Sometimes it's just impossible to do it all and that's totally fine. Sometimes other things have to take a backseat to what you have to prioritize right now. So yeah, for the past month, what I really needed to prioritize was work. Thank you to everyone who has been leaving me such sweet messages and comments. I really, really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for understanding. Now, I'm back. Yay! <laughs> So today, I'm going to be sharing with you guys some memorization tips which worked well for me in law school and in bar review. These memorization tips work for anyone though, even if you're in college or in high school, but they're particularly helpful if you're a struggling law student with super limited time on your hands, like I once was. By the way, personally, I am not gifted or good at memorization. There are just some people kasi talaga who have photographic memory, you know? Well, I wasn't and I'm still not one of them. Sana all. So especially to you guys out there who are just average at memory work like I am, I hope that these tips work as well for you as they did for me. I've mentioned some of these tips before in passing in some of my previous videos, but I will mention some of them again here because I think it's important that all my tips about memorization be centralized into one video specifically about memorization. So what are my memorization techniques? Let's go sa go! My first tip is to understand first what you are trying to memorize. This is incredibly important and incredibly basic. Comprehension before memorization, always remember. If you try memorizing something without having understood it first, then you're basically going to be trying to memorize a jumble of words that you can't even make heads or tails of. It just won't make sense. I know that as law students, wala tayong tahim. Okay? Kaya nga wala tayong jowa eh. So it may seem counterintuitive to spend your precious minutes understanding something before just memorizing it straight away. But believe me, if you blindly memorize something without having properly understood it first, then your retention is going to be extremely shallow and superficial. Yeah, you may be able to recite what you memorized the next day in time for recitation, but you will have forgotten it already in one week. Because your retention will just be that short term, then you're going to have to re-memorize it again during midterms, again during finals, again during your bar review subjects in fourth year, and again during bar review. So if you look at the big picture, it's really such a waste of your precious time. Remembering things short term isn't enough because it's important to retain long term what you've memorized. Short term retention will get you through tomorrow's recit, but it won't get you through the bar exam. Read first. Analyze first. Understand the concept first. Take the time that you need to absorb it. And once you've done that, memorize. My next tip is to break up long paragraphs into shorter portions. Law students know that many provisions of law have so many ideas jam-packed into one provision. And when you're staring at those super long provisions or laws, then it just gets very overwhelming. I've said before that you cannot consume a huge block of ice if it's in the form of a huge block of ice. But you can consume it if you break it down into little itty-bitty bite-sized pieces. So let's say that you're faced with a very long paragraph. When you're reading the provision and nag-end na si concept 1, then lagyan nyo na agad ng slash mark. Then you're reading it again, sobrang haba, and nag-end na yung concept 2, then lagyan na, na ulit ng slash mark. When you do that right away, just by putting a simple slash mark, you immediately see the break or the division in ideas. You immediately make an intimidating looking provision much friendlier and a lot more understandable. My next tip is to create a trigger word or a key phrase for the provision that you're trying to memorize. A trigger word or a key phrase is something that will jog your memory just by looking at it. It's an aha word or phrase. Something that when you see, you go, aha, ito yon. For example, for Article 19 of the Civil Code, the key phrase that I would use is exercise of rights. For Article 20, it would be willful or negligent damage. For Article 21, it would be willful loss or injury. We all have different styles or preferences for creating our trigger words or our key phrases, right? So I won't tell you how you should come up with yours. What I'm telling you is that you should have them. You should definitely have trigger words or key phrases for the provisions that you're trying to commit to memory. Now, once you've identified your trigger words or your key phrases for the provisions that you're trying to memorize, then list them all down on a separate piece of paper or on a separate document in your iPad. In that list, don't write anything except for number one, the provision number, and do your trigger word or your key phrase. This will be your master list of provisions and trigger words or phrases. It should be very simple and look something like this. That master list is very useful for quick recall purposes. As in, you glance at it and you know. Parang true love lang yan. <laughs> it's something that you can use for recit when you're supposed to recall what you memorized in a split second. You can also use it as a reviewer for your exams. My next 
next tip applies to when you have to memorize the general rule and the exception. Use a distinct color or symbol to mark the general rule. And then, use only one distinct mark to mark the exception. So for example, you're reading your codal, right? Highlight the general rule. And for the exception, use a symbol. The symbol that I used in law school to mark exceptions was a circle with an X inside. When you do this, the general rule is easily apparent, and so is the exception. Keep in mind that you don't just study material once. Rather, you review your material again for midterms, again for finals, again for your bar review subjects in fourth year, and again during bar review. If you highlight the general rule and the exception in the exact same way, so parang general rule, blue highlighter, exception, blue highlighter pa rin. When you go back to your material later, it will be so hard to identify which the general rule and which the exception is because everything just looks like one big chunk of highlighted text. Pare-pareho yung itsura eh. But if you mark the general rule a certain way, and you mark the exception a different way, when you're memorizing and reviewing, you will immediately see, ah, this is the general rule. Ah, these are the exceptions to that general rule. Kita mo na agad. My next tip is to read aloud what you are memorizing. Scientific studies suggest that you are more likely to remember something if you read it out loud. So as you're memorizing, mouth what you're memorizing to yourself. Read the provision out loud to yourself as you're memorizing it. Just be considerate of the other people around you who are trying to study too, so bawal maingay. The thing that helped me do this in law school and in bar review was earplugs. This is because when you wear earplugs, you can hear yourself even if you murmur something to yourself very, very softly. If you don't wear earplugs, then just to hear yourself over the ambient noise in Starbucks or in the library, then you're going to have to raise your voice. That's annoying to the people around you. Don't be that annoying law student. Yeah, earplugs are super underrated. I got mine at True Value. My next tip is to repeat, 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 repeat. Read the material that you're supposed to memorize again and again, over and over and over. It's been well established that repetition is the key to memory. So read and repeat and read and repeat. Do it as many times as you have to and as much as your time allows. Pounding your brain with the same information again and again, over and over, definitely helps with retention. If audio codals work for you, then you can also use those. You can just play them over and over while you're doing your other activities like driving or exercising. Also, if you need to memorize a bunch of provisions, then I recommend that you master first the one provision that you're memorizing now before moving on to the next one. If medyo hilaw pa yung memorization mo of the current provision, then don't go on to memorize the succeeding one yet. You'll just get confused. Promise. So go one by one. My next tip is to write and recite. To really lock in what you're memorizing, it greatly helps to number one, to write down what you're memorizing and to recite to yourself what you're memorizing. You can write and recite as you're memorizing or you can also do it after to test yourself. To write, literally all you have to do is to get some scratch paper and to write down what you're memorizing or what you've memorized. Yes, scratch paper talaga yung ginamit ko dati. Wala nang notebook notebook. Just write down the provision as you're memorizing it. This technique helps because it adds another layer to your learning, which helps you ingrain even more what you're studying. To recite naman, pretend that you're reciting in front of your professor and simply recite the provision out loud. It's actually also useful to recite to yourself when there are intentional distractions around. Because then, you're really testing if you can remember the provisions in an uncomfortable environment. For example, you can recite the provisions out loud when you're making dinner or driving, when walking, or when the TV is on or there's music playing in the background. When you're in comfortable environments, kasi, like for example, when you're sitting quietly at your desk or when you're lying on your bed, it's so easy to remember what you memorized. But in reality, you will not be asked questions in comfortable, controlled environments. Instead, you will be asked questions about what you memorized in uncontrolled environments with so much pressure, namely in daily law school recitation and in highly time-pressured exams. So when you're memorizing, you have to make sure that you can regurgitate whatever it is you memorized no matter what the situation, whether it's in your bedroom or in your classroom. Test yourself in distracting situations so that you can be sure that you will remember what you memorized in distracting situations. Writing and reciting to yourself what you've memorized actually ties in with my earlier tip about repetition. We've already established that repetition is great for attention, right? When you write and recite to yourself when you memorize, you are actually repeating to yourself what you're learning in verbal and in written format. It's just another form of repetition. Also, you're covering all bases of learning because your learning is not just visual, but actually also auditory. And as they say, the more senses you use while learning, the more effective learning will be. The better you are at combining visual and auditory information, the better you can remember what you've learned. My next tip is to use mnemonics. A mnemonic is basically any learning technique that will help you retain or retrieve information in the human memory. Based on my experience, taking the first letters of an enumeration or the first few letters 
is really the most common mnemonic for law students. For example, let's say that you have to memorize this enumeration. Law students usually make mnemonics by taking the first letters of the enumeration. So here, it would be L-C-Q-A-Q. -Q. You could also rearrange it so that it's catchier, so it could be CLACK. If you find that random jumble of letters difficult to memorize, you can also add in the next few letters of the enumeration. So here, it would be LA, CO, Q, AC, Q. To make it even catchier and easier to remember, you can even rearrange those mnemonics to form something easier to say. For example, a cola Q2. You can even take it a step further by creating a story for your mnemonics. Your story doesn't even have to make sense. In fact, sometimes when the story is so outrageous, that makes it even easier to remember. For example, here your story could be Lazy Condors Actually Quack Quack. It sounds funny, right? Pero aminin yon, alala nyo. <laughs> Some people say that for better attention, you should make mnemonics which are special to you or which have some sort of meaning for you. For example, yung lazy condors actually quack quack. But honestly, what law student has time for that? <laughs> Minsan wala nga tayong tayong maligo eh. Realistic tayo mga besh. So for me, generic mnemonics like clack are enough to get the job done. If you don't want to make your own mnemonics, a great reviewer which already has mnemonics is Sun by the Red Notes, also known as Memory Aid. The best. Bramis. My next tip is that if you don't have to memorize something, then don't. Your brain is finite. Your brain can only take so much studying and information. And in law school, it's just so much information. So when you're studying, you should use that brain power only for what you need. When you have the chance to choose between understanding something or memorizing something, always choose to understand rather than to memorize. Of course, there are some provisions which you will have no choice but to memorize. But what I'm saying is that for those provisions which you don't have to memorize, Danes. Don't do it. If understanding a provision is enough, do not memorize it anymore. Memorize only what cannot be simply understood. For example, the most common things which a law student cannot just understand but actually has to memorize are elements and enumerations under the law. Obviously, there's just no way around that one. You really will have to memorize. But otherwise, don't. My next tip is to test yourself by drawing lots. This tip applies when you already finished memorizing what you had to memorize. You can't memorize in a vacuum. You have to self-test your recall in different ways. This is the point wherein you'll want to test your recall. To do this, use the draw lots method. On pieces of paper, write down the numbers of all the different provisions which you memorized, then fold up those pieces of paper, draw lots, and recite away. <laughs> Never mind if you look crazy drawing lots with yourself. <laughs> okay lang yan. Drawing lots is an effective self-training method for memorization because by adding the element of surprise, it replicates the classroom environment wherein you have no idea what your prof will ask you to recite. And if you're drawing lots and reciting and you forget something, then you can always go back to your master list of trigger words and key phrases which you earlier made. So yeah guys, that's it! Those are all my tips for memorization. If you already have an excellent memory, then good for you. You are ready. <laughs> but if you have just average memory skills like the rest of us, myself included, then I hope that these tips will be useful to you in some way. If you like this video, then please give it a thumbs up. Please also don't forget to subscribe to my channel and to hit the notification bell below so that you guys are informed of my future videos. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and see you in my next video. Bye! So it may seem counterintuitive. So it may seem ka. Uy, meron akong Watson's card! What happened? Putek, it's five o'clock. Magtrabaho na ako. <laughs>